Hello, welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining my uh, thanks for joining me on my exploration of the wide world of pens. And you see before you three pens that I just received, well, recently received, last couple of days. And you may ask why these three pens, and, and that's a very valid question. So let's go through it. These were from Ali. Uh, these were from Etsy. I bought these pens on Etsy. They arrived in a little over two weeks, which was very fast. And uh, I think, uh, at least from my experience, a lot of uh, my pens from China are arriving now in about two to three weeks. I know some of you are experiencing some longer shipment times, and I truthfully can't explain everything, but I can only report on what has happened from my orders. So this pen, you may recognize the shape, the design. That chariot is a giveaway, and they use it in a number of places. And it has a nice big cap band. Unfortunately, the model number is not on it, but the name of the pen maker is. It's a beautiful green resin. A little bit of pearlescence, not a lot. It's just a nice subtle design. This is a good, to me, a good design for a business pen. The cap comes off. In a lot of turns, over two and a half, and we see a nice Jin Hao number six nib. So this is the Jin Hao 100, also referred to as a Centennial. Comes in many different colors. Here's some examples. Some of the colors seem to be in short supply. I paid a little bit more than I should have for this pen, a couple dollars more, but I just fell in love with the resin and felt it really went well with this design of this pen. And I'm not disappointed. The second pen in the group is what I would call a generic pen. It has a nice uh, little metal insert into the top of the finial, kind of like the Jin Hao did. And it, maybe that's a design characteristic that Pen makers are now starting to do, and they're putting together something similar to this design. And I just really like this resin. It is different than anything else that I have. I don't know what name I would call it. I'm open to suggestions. Interesting design of the cap band. No faux blind cap. The cap comes off in dun da 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 dun ah almost four turns. Sorry for the four letter word. Uh but and it has a number five size nib, which is uh, not necessarily in keeping with the quality of the pen, the shape of the pen, the design of the pen, the size of the pen. But I do like that resin, so we're going to explore this one a little bit more in depth. Dun, dun, dun. So this is a pen that uh, Bobby threw in with the order. It's a pen he's been selling for a while, but unfortunately not selling right now. So this may have been one that he had left over. And if we look at that red band, we'll notice it's a Fan Mu. And I do have a, <clears throat> at least one or two other Fan Mu pens. And also... This filling mechanism is that push plunger, whatever you want to call it, reminiscent of a few other pens. The cap comes off in ah, about one turn, which is nice. It's about time we got one that came off with a reasonable amount of turns. And we'll just see a generic uh, number five nib there, generic plastic feed. The resin is interesting, kind of reminds me of summer, but not exactly a resin that I've enjoyed from Pen BBS. So we're going to explore these pens a little bit more, compare them to other pens, and just present them for your entertainment. So just for those curious about how the pens were packaged, 
Each pen was in its nice little cellophane wrapper. And each pen was also in one of these nice kind of like felt pen holders, single pen holders. And they're nice if you want to put your pen in there, if you want to put it in your pocket or your case or your bag or your purse or whatever. And it gets it stays protected, but it's still easy to get in and out. A nice little accessory that came along with the pens. Well, I've disassembled the found Moo, and it is in a same resin as pen bbs uses they call summer i didn't quite think so but those blue swirls are the same color <clears throat> you know this is a resin that like many of the other resins has a lot of variety into it no two pens are going to be the same and those of you that follow my channel may recognize this which is a nice filling device that i got and it is the exact filling mechanism that's in the pen, except now there's threads here. This knob at the end just unturns. You can take the whole thing easily apart so it's easy to clean, which is nice because if I use this to do ink, it's a pain in the ass to get it cleaned out. you got to do it by hand. I haven't pulled the nibber feet. I'm not worried about it. I'm not planning to replace it. So that's the Fan Moo Exploration. So I do have one other pen with a similar filling mechanism, the Pen BBS 500. You can see those this spring through that kind of translucent resin. You pull it out and you see how it matches up to the 500. But they, on the 500, took a really interesting approach from my perspective. This top piece just unscrews and then you're able to pull this up and I just unscrewed that chrome ring. Not the best design but it works. You pull this up and you engage the piston and now you can activate it. And as usual, I haven't done it for a while on this pen, so it takes a little bit of effort for that first move, but then it moves fine. This spring is really strong, much stronger than the one on the fan moo. So when you're done filling it, you disengage the rod from the piston, push it down, and then you screw that end back in. And occasionally this will come loose, but that eh, doesn't worry me. I mean, there's no real comparison between these two pens. This, this one feels substantial, has a number six nib that we're all familiar with. And there's like maybe $10 difference between these two pens. So to me, you know, 20 some dollars versus low 30s, uh, the 500 is a much better buy in my view. One of the other things I noticed when I was playing around with this is those end caps are interchangeable. So it's the same cap for both the top and bottom. Kind of similar to another pen bbs model the 469 so what ink to put in the fan mu this ink called out to me i can't explain why it's an ink i bought at a pen show i thought it would be a great ink i don't use it as much as i think i should it's a nice dark ocean color. I guess the Great Southern Ocean is a little bit dark. I have two chromatographies for your viewing enjoyment. The one on the left is the one done in coffee filter paper. You can buy like a hundred of these for a couple bucks and they're very absorbent and the Water moves very, very quickly. So you put the ink at the bottom, you dip it in, I count to 10 or 15, I pull it out, and this is what we get. So a while ago, watching a video of someone doing ink reviews, they talked about using actual chromatography paper. So I did my research on Amazon and I found this paper 
So here I put down the line of ink. I dip it in water and I count to 60. 10 seconds, 60 seconds. And this takes at least five minutes for it to completely move the ink up until it stops. So this shows a lot more variation in the colors of the ink than the filter paper did. Uh, for most inks, I find it to be a lot more descriptive, a lot more detail on the ink than the normal coffee filter paper. But the real important thing is, how does that nib write? You may ask, how does this filling system work? So it's about as simple as they can get. You just push the uh, pen into a bottle of ink so the ink level comes up above the section a little bit more. You press down and then you let it up. Let it up slowly so it doesn't cavitate. And as you can see you get a fairly full fill. And we could do it one more time just to see if we can get a little bit more in there. So that's pretty full. This is about the easiest filling system from my perspective. And I do have that ink bottle secured so it doesn't accidentally tip over. So do I have another Fanmu pen? Yes, I do. And they share in common Fanmu. Let's get it in the right orientation. Fanmu at that red band. But this one is more like the Moonman M2. A nice uh, pocket pen. I love that smog finish. Nice red roll stop there. So like they did with this fan moo, they took a concept and an idea. They elevated it. And they added their own special touches. And I appreciate that. Certainly a pen maker to watch for. Sorry to be remiss if I didn't compare and contrast these two fan moo pens that I have. First of all, they're both visually very interesting. I admire what they did. I like the red accent. This uh, acrylic is very nice along with this acrylic here and both of these are acrylics that Pen BBS uses. In this one the cap comes off with a little over one turn so that's nice. And in this one it also comes off in about the same amount of turns and we'll look at generic steel nibs. Yes, the light's not the best. We'll bring in some more light. So hopefully you can see, and these are both inked up, that this one here on the right has a medium point and the one on the left, the one that's in this review, has a fine point. And that's going to show up in the writing, which we will do shortly. So this fan moo is very light. Its length is fine in the hand without posting. And that's good because it doesn't post. Like the 469, this design where the cap on both ends is the same. They're not designed to be posted. I think that could be corrected, but I'm not involved in that design aspect. The section is about as small as I can deal with, but with that number five nib, I'm going to hold it a little bit away from the end of the nib, and there it's about the right diameter. The threads are innocuous. That red band is innocuous. There's a little step up, but nah, it's not really something that's going to interfere with where you hold the pen. Let's show you those diameters of the section. Let's show you the weight of the pen. It is a light pen. Something you can write with with long periods of time. Speaking of writing, let's hear that nib on paper.
Hope you'll, you heard how smooth this fine nib is. And it's pretty wet. The medium nib is also very smooth and also pretty wet. This is Robert Oster Turquoise. This is Robert Oster Great Southern Ocean. A little bit darker, and a little bit of green in it, a little bit more blue in it, and a little green too. So this nib is super smooth. I would put it up smoothest, finest nibs that I've written with. I happen to like this pen much more than I expected to. And I revisited the other fan Moo, which also has a great nib in it. So let's rate this pen. And this is a very, very difficult rating for me. I'm going to give it a 9.2. One check for the nib. One check for the design. And one check for the build, engineering, etc., etc. It is a very effective and efficient filling mechanism. One of the best around. It's made out of great acrylic. That clear barrel is excellent. You can definitely see the level of ink that you have without any extraordinary measures. It's always nice to get a pen like this that surprises you. And when you lay the nib on paper, the first response is, wow. Now we're going to go on and explore the last pen in this series. Here are my three Jinhao 100 Centennial Fountain Pens. And I don't think I'll add more to them, but I've said that before. So we have the solid orange color. A marmalade, kind of a yellowish orange, which is a nice acrylic with some interesting chunky cracked ice pattern to it. And then a green one, with just kind of like a subtle pattern to it, but still very nice. These three are all fairly well made. The threads on the yellow one are a little bit wonky, but, you know, it's just... One of those things, it's two and three quarter turns to get off. So when you push it in, sometimes it just sticks a little bit in the beginning. I put some silicone grease on it. It still kind of like is wonky. The orange one, you know, two and three quarter turns again. But these threads always engage well. So I think maybe, you know, QC is not the best, especially a pen at under $15.00. And of course the green one, again two and three quarter turns, so they're consistent there. And these threads also engage very nicely. It's a standard Jinhao number no. six uh, medium nib in it, and it, it writes consistently well. You're not going to get any line variation out of it, but for an everyday carry, and for taking quick notes, oh, except for the uncapping issue, this pen would work fine. I'm not going to write with the green Jinhao 100 in this review. I'm just going to show you the writing I did with the 100 Centennial, which was the orange one, which I put some nice uh, Caveco Sunrise orange in it. A great medium steel nib, very consistent writer, very wet writer, a very smooth writer. And as you can see, I gave that pen a 9.1 with a few checks, and I called it a great buy. So sorry for no live writing. I'll give you a link to the original review and you can watch the live writing there. Well, I've decided that the generic pen is turntable worthy. Primarily because of the resin. It's just a unique resin. You have to like blue because that's the predominant color. But the grays and the whites and whatever certainly add some dimension to it. And as Mr. Crab is proud to display this pen as we come around he's going to give us a wink and we're going to look more closely at the pen so this pen is very solidly made fit and finish is good 
nice designed functional clip the gold plating is nice and there's some little design scroll work there which is actually in the barrel so that's uh, one of the things that this pen has done there's a lot of metal in it you know the metal cap band extends and is glued in place here so it's metal on metal you know it, it's very well made from a structural view viewpoint you know a design engineering viewpoint uh, not so much you know standard converter has that little uh, ball in it it fits very securely in there and that nice you know metal collar so that's one of the things that some people uh, at least me focus on is a lot of metal in this pen leads to stability but it also leads to potential issues because metal and plastic are two different materials they expand and contract differently and that's been a weak point I've had pens break there uh, when they fall off of my desk, which unfortunately happens more often than it should. I haven't really seen if this will unscrew. It turns. So, it doesn't unscrew. And, uh, yeah, there we go. So it is a screw-in uh, pen nib assembly. Standard number five. And uh, we're going to do an LED look at this pen just to see if there's much transparency to the resin. So now we just have sunlight coming in, a diffused sunlight. It's a cloudy day or a hazy day because of the smoke from the fires in the west of the uh, United States. And I'm all the way on the east side of the United States, so that's a long distance. It's a very sad situation. I hope at some time people can come to a way of dealing with it. As we play the LED on these parts of the pen, that resin just really pops, I think. You know, I'm happy about it from that perspective. If we put the LED inside, we'll see a little bit of a transparency where those lighter chunks are. If we look inside it, we'll... See, there is um, a machined ledge in there. It looks like it's machined as one piece, but obviously not, because that finial has to attach somehow. But they could have made this cap one piece and then just uh, put threads in here to put that finial in. So I think, from a, like I said, from an engineering viewpoint, I think it's extremely well-engineered pen. One of the better engineered pens I've experienced lately. So what ink to put in this interesting looking pen. Well, I choose this one. It's uh, Sea Flame. It's number 291. Here's the color card. I like that blue. And it is a little sparkly. Not a whole lot, just a subtle amount, which is very, very nice. And the chromatography just shows it is blue. And there's that little bit of glitter that stays here when that water pushes the pigment up. Some may say that I live dangerously using a lot of these glitter inks and some interesting pens with fine nibs, but let's see how it works in the generic pen. We're ready for the writing sample. I wish I could call it other than a generic pen, but Bobby's Etsy listing doesn't give me a lot to go on. So if I had some time to spend with the pen, so there's a couple things. I mentioned engineering is excellent, but I think design missed a few areas. And you know, maybe it's engineering and design, but four turns to get the cap off is three turns too many. It's a little bit over four turns. And one would think based on this design, that it would post and yes you can force the cap on and yes it does stay but it makes for a very long pen uh, the balance is not terrible but it's not great the pen fits okay in the hand unposted we give you the lengths 
And the other downside, I think, from the design viewpoint is the section could be a little bit bigger, at least in diameter. The length is okay. These threads, you can feel there's a step up there. You know, if you grip this thing really tight, it could bother you over time, but it doesn't bother me. And they could have put a number six nib on it, which I think would have fit better into the overall look of the pen from an aesthetics viewpoint. We'll give you the dimensions of, those, of that section. And we'll also give you the weight of the pen. It feels light in the hand. And like I said, the cap does add some weight to it changes the balance but it's so light that it doesn't really matter that much so let's see how this glitter ink works in this nib So for a fine to extra fine nib, it's smooth. The first impressions of writing with it, it felt a little toothy, as some people might say. But after uh, a little bit of writing, it smoothed out well. I haven't done any smoothing on the emery board or the micromesh, but that might be something in the future of this nib. Uh, that section will bother me over time. It's a little bit of a flare out at the end, but just not enough to really make it useful. Where I hold it, it's a decent diameter, about as thin as I can deal with. But, you know, it's, it's it, I guess maybe aesthetics. I don't know why some pen people make a thin section like this maybe some people like it it might be more popular in the chinese market why it wasn't designed a little bit better to post those are the things that bother me so now we're going to rate this pen and i'm going to give it an 8.6 it gets one check for the the build the, the quality that they use the metal components that they use the the finish and you know, everything else is done very very well and the look gets two checks because i just fall in love with this resin something i don't have in any other pen so that makes it unique and considering how many pens i have it's hard to get a new resin is this a pen for you it doesn't get my wholehearted recommendations but again some people like a thin section some people might just fall in love with this resin. Uh, Quality-wise, I don't think there's anything to detract from, from this pen. It filled easily. That converter worked well. And it's actually doing good with this glitter ink. And it's a fairly wet nib. Wetter than I expected, considering how fine the line is. So this is the end of this re review of, of three pens, of different types of pens, but all bought at one time and arrived at one time. So if you've liked this, this run through, um, leave me a comment. Let me know whether you enjoy this or should I do each pen individually. Um, doesn't matter to me. So thank you for watching. May you have many great writing experiences and find a pen that you fall in love with, and primarily a pen that encourages you to put ink on paper, put your thoughts on paper. Share your thoughts. Write a letter. Write in a journal. Just write. Well, I wish all of you are safe, healthy, and happy. We've reached the end of this video. So go out there and do some writing. I'm going to say bye for now. And I'm impressed how this ink works well in this nib.